Skip to like six minutes into the video to get straight to the barbecue, straight to the protest, straight to the carnage. The, actu the actual time the barbecue starts is right here. Well, it happened. Part part two. Bar barbecue part two. Wow, part two. Uh, but this time it wasn't my barbecue. I didn't have one. It was hosted by a man named TJ Medway. So, um, the barbecue, you're having a barbecue, eh? Yes, sir, I am. That's a genius idea. Where'd you come up with that? TJ is a third generation trucker and a farmer, but more on him later. You know, there's a reason I didn't do a second barbecue. That reason is, if you've seen the first video once, you've seen it a thousand times. The vegans don't like meat, so I cooked meat in front of them. This time, it happened again. Do you want to know how the vegans reacted? Spoiler alert, they didn't like it. But this time, when TJ uh, had his barbecue, it was for a good cause. The vegans are protesting to repeal Bill 156. Bill 156 is a bill that would protect truckers' rights, farmers' rights, and essentially make it illegal to give pigs water and trespass on farms and agriculture and shit like that. So TJ is protesting their protest. He gathered a hundred plus truckers together to have a barbecue to protest these protesters. So I grabbed my camera and my brother and we went down to interview TJ and, you know, see what his side of the story is. Tell me who you are and introduce yourself again. My name's uh, TJ Medway. I'm a third generation truck driver and I uh, just started up a farm up northern Ontario. You had a, you had a protest a month ago protesting the protesters. Yep. I tried to film that. I fucked up. That's my bad. <laughs> so just tell me what you're doing here, what Bill 56, 156 is and yeah, go from there. Bill 156 is a pro-agriculture act. It yeah. uh, stops, essentially stops protesters and extremists from coming onto our land and doing what they do. Um, furthermore, you know, it stops them from giving water to the pigs like we see down here every couple days. Yeah. So, the vegans argument is, is that like, it's hot in the trucks, um, they're trying to bear witness to the pigs. Is it hot in the trucks? No. When the trucks are moving, it's actually really comfortable. The majority of the time the pigs lie down, the cows lie down, whatever you're hauling lies down, gets comfy and they're just along for the ride. Yeah, and like in the winter time, do they get cold? Uh, no, they actually sweat. Uh, pigs and cows are really, really warm. So a lot of the time when it's minus 18, minus 20 out, we actually have to take boards out when we stop because it gets hot in there. You know, when they're giving water to the pigs, you don't know what they're giving. It could be anything. And like, last time I was here, I saw a woman with an empty pesticide container spraying water in there. I'm not even sure if she cleaned that out. So like, Bill 156 would stop that. Like, you don't know what's in the, what no, they're giving. 100%. We have no clue whether it's water, it could be acid, it could be anything. Whatever they feel like putting into it, um, you know, we've seen them do some pretty extreme things in the past, and it's wondering how far they're actually willing to go. Yeah, and I heard that like when they stick their hands, I mean, like try sticking your hand in there. They'll they'll bite your hand. They'll bite it off, right? Uh, pigs. Rumor has it they can devour a whole human in like five minutes or something like that. Yeah, I never mess with a man with a pig farm. I heard that from one of the farmers that like when they give them water, it actually distresses them and they fight over it. Yeah, Michael Cooch, Cook does a really good video on that and um, he's done multiple videos of coming down here every day and a day in the life of without the protesters and a day in the life with the protesters. So when they're giving the pigs water, the pigs don't actually drink it. Uh, it's mainly all on the ground and it's flooding outside of the trailer and if you actually haul livestock and you knew how livestock react, um, if a trailer is nice and dry, that means the animal had a great comfortable ride. You know, when the bedding's all the same way you pretty much put it in as, they, they love it. They're happy with that. Well, I mean, like, they're pigs. They're dirty animals. I assume they'd rather just lick it up off the floor or roll around in it. Yeah, exactly. I, I have pigs at my farm. Yeah. Uh, I have three at most, but, you know, I mainly do uh, cattle and chickens. So, pigs love walling around in the mud. Yeah, and, like, you know, you're a pig farmer. You take care of lots of animals. Do you think that, like, they you know, put as much time and effort and love and care into taking care of as many animals as you do? 
No, not by far. They just virtue signal? Yeah. Let's say they touch the driver's heart and the driver's like, you know what, you got me, I'm going to become vegan, take the pigs. Do you think that they'd be ready to take 100 plus pigs home with them? Not a chance. A lot of these people wouldn't have a clue on how to take care of a cow or a pig or even a chicken for that matter. Yeah, it's like, uh, now what do we do? Misinformation. It's yeah. really a lot of misinformation. So, you know, like that woman was saying, like, truckers are the kind of the backbone of the country, you know, like, blue collar guys, like, you know, the trades and stuff, if an electrician doesn't show up, you don't have your lights on. If a plumber doesn't show up, you drown in your own piss and shit. The truckers don't show up, people starve, you know, and they're trying to fuck with that. Yeah, I think uh, statistics say that the whole world would collapse when in under three days of truck drivers stopped working. We're literally the backbone of this country. Yeah, I know, and like, everybody thinks that like, oh, they're evil and stuff. No, man, like, we're all trying to eat, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. Anyways, I don't want to take up too much of your time, so I really appreciate you taking Thank the you. torch, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you again sometime. Yeah, for sure. Wow, that was a great, what a great audience. What a great, wow, what a great interview. Uh, let's uh, put a little bit of spring in your step, and uh, let's enjoy the show, folks. Wow. <laughs> People holding the sign in front of that truck were farmers and truckers. They held it there to distract the vegans while another truck full of pigs pulls in. And I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> So this part, right there, you see that girl in the left? Look at the height difference. The trucker only stops because other people were flagging him down. Look at that fucking lady. She's just standing there, backs up a bit because she's gonna get fuck. Because something bad's gonna happen. Fuck's sake, really? That's how the... Can't... Right here. Look at the height difference. That guy's fucking probably 6'2". Look at the height. Right there. Now this is the perfect part. This is the kicker. Hey, so... Can you see anything in front of you? I can see like the top of their hair. That's about it. Yeah? But you can't see that girl, can you? What girl? It's three inches lower than normal? No shit! Look at that. I was in front of the truck and I couldn't even see the guy. It makes you... It raises some questions. But anyways, it's about that time that my younger brother Jake, Jay Portal, the great Jay Portal, the musician, noticed a lady on the vegan side that he matched with on Tinder. So. We went over there so that Jay could find his true love and that I can make a peace offering. TJ was kind enough to have a vegetarian option for the vegans. So I went over there with a couple fruit cups looking for peace and Jake went over there looking for love. I think I, uh, I think I see a girl I matched with on Tinder over there. Should I go say what's up? Yeah. Let's get it. Darlene? You're, not, you're Darlene. We met on maturedating.com. I swear we did. Uh, Jocelyn. Ah. You don't go on those sites. Ah. I thought I met my match, man. You want a fruit? You want a fruit cup? No. I brought a peace offering. You want a fruit cup? Would you like a fruit cup? No, you're good. But really, just trying to understand uh, their perspective. Oh, uh, 
fucked. We're getting fucked with. Alright, we're good. Would you like a fruit cup? No, thank you. No? Okay. All right, fuck it. Fucking belly of the beast, boys. We tried. We tried to have a conversation. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. I think they hate my guts. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I just ate a whole fruit cup in front of them, so you know. We tried. All right, peace. Huh? <laughs> wow, what a great audience. Well, it was about that time that I had decided to get the fuck out of there. But before I left, I gave TJ a little, go, uh, a little present. I got a gift for you, brother. Oh, it's beautiful. The original. The apron, apron that I wore. Yeah, man. It's yours now. I'm passing the torch to you, brother. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Fuck yeah, dude. Well, there you have it. Barbecue part two. Fucking, oh, you good barbecue in front of the vegans. The vegans don't, they don't like meat. You should fucking do it again. Well, I hope you're fucking happy because it happened again. But this time it was for a fucking good cause. TJ fucking used all of his money to actually have a good, a good barbecue with fucking on, onions, other things. It was awesome, man. It was delicious. Oh yes, I was, I forgot to mention that uh, in the end, TJ and that hot, thick vegan that almost got ran over by a truck became friends. Truth is, kid, the game was rigged from the start. But yeah, uh, I have been gone for a very long time, and I apologize. I am back. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. New videos every once in a while. <laughs>